Good evening, church. Good evening. We are at the Tuesday of Holy Week or Passion Week, whichever word you want to call it. This is an awesome time. And I'm going to be before you on this Tuesday night to say a little something, hopefully to encourage you. Um, can we... Um, Bow our heads for a word of prayer, please. Father God, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus, I'd like to thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord God, I'd like to thank you, Lord, for this week of holiness and passion, Lord, that we are going to share with one another, I pray, O oh Lord. 
Now, Lord God, I'm just asking, Lord, that you let me decrease, Lord, that you may increase, Lord. Lord, that you let your words flow through me, Lord, that it may reach the ears of someone, Lord, who is standing in the need of you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I begin my sermon, I'd like to thank my pastor, Dr. Demetrius K. Williams, for giving me the opportunity to, to preach during this Holy Week, especially on this Tuesday of Holy Week. And I'd like to thank all the deacons and the officers of Community Baptist Church. I'd like to thank all of you who are listening to this message and viewing this message, however are you receiving it. I, I pray that God lets you receive it in a good way. My scripture for tonight's uh, message is coming from Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. And it's the King James Version. And Jesus answering said it unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that these things which he said it shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he said it. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. My focal verse for tonight's message will come from Mark 11 and 23. And Jesus answering, said it unto them, have faith in God. My subject or title of this message is, have faith and believe. You see, Tuesday, it was early Tuesday morning, and, and, and Jesus and his disciples were on their way back to Jerusalem to go back to the temple. And as they were walking down the road back to Jerusalem from where they were coming from, Peter noticed that the fig tree that Jesus had cursed the day before for having leaves that were green but no fruit or no figs on them. So Jesus cursed the tree and said that no one shall eat of this tree again. As they were walking by this fig tree, Peter observed that the fig tree had died. And Peter said in verse 11 and 21, and Peter recalling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedest has withered away. Now in my spiritual mind, I can picture Peter being pleased with his statement concerning the fig tree. You know that feeling you get when you answer a question and you're feeling really good about the answer that you gave and, 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 and you're feeling you're really feeling yourself because you felt that you have accomplished something very good when you and that's how I can see Peter feeling as they're walking along the way. And now I'm sure that when Peter made this comment, he was not expecting the reply that Jesus was about to give him. After all, Peter was just being very observant. He had observed something that none of the other disciples nor people that were walking with them had observed. He had remembered what Jesus had said the day before. And then the very next day, this tree that had green leaves had begun to wither and die. However, church, however, however, I am sure that Jesus replied, still caught Peter and all those that were walking with him off guard. You see, Jesus didn't say nothing that was harsh to Peter. He didn't rebuke Peter. He didn't do any of that. You know, he just gave a reply that I'm pretty sure that if many of us received the same reply, we would look at, at, at God with a, 
at Jesus with a puzzled look on our face. We would look like, what are you saying to us, Lord? All I did was make an observation of something that you said would happen and it came to pass. But church, I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus' reply was not that harsh at all. You know, Jesus' reply was very simple, you know, because Jesus knew that he was getting ready to have an entire day of confrontation with the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and other religious leaders at that time. See, those religious leaders were looking to trick him and trip him up. So Jesus' reply to Peter was not one that was meant to be of ill rebuke. It was just one that was very simple. It was so simple, in fact, all Jesus told Peter was to have faith. You see, church, having faith is all we need. And as we enter this holy week, all Jesus had was faith to go forth. You see, because the religious leaders were going to try to question his authority uh, of who sent you, they asked. They wanted to question him on why he was, how he was able to do what he was able to do. They even tried to get him to pledge allegiance to Caesar by trying to trick him with money. And, and, And Jesus, while he was going through He had to take time not only to teach his disciples on giving, but he also had to teach the pious religious leaders and the rich with the woman who gave all she had and said that she gave more to God because she gave out of her all she had, whereas the people who gave more than she gave gave out of their abundance but didn't necessarily give to God all that they had. You see, God wants us to give him all that we have, not some of what we have. A lot of us have riches, but God doesn't want our riches. God wants us to give of ourselves and he wants to give he wants us to give all of ourselves. So Jesus knew that he was going to be faced with all of these obstacles so that when Peter made that simple observation early in the morning, Jesus, all he said was Peter. Or he didn't say, Peter, he said, just have faith in God. Church, I'm here to tell you that we need to have faith in God to see us through the darkest times and the darkest periods of our lives. Right now, church, we are still in the midst of a pandemic uh, called coronavirus. Oh, don't get it twisted. Don't think because they have a virus out there and you got the shot that it's time to take off the mask and take off your sanitizing uh, spirit and get back out there and do what you did before. No, no, no. We are still in the midst of a pandemic and God wants us to have faith. He wants us to have faith that the vaccines are going to work. He wants us to have faith and trust that our neighbors are going to get vaccinated. He wants us to have faith and trust that Yes, he will restore order, but the only way he can restore order is that we have to have faith and trust. We must believe that what God is doing right now is going to work. But if we don't, if we are doubting God, then his spirit cannot work through us. See, Jesus knew that on this Tuesday morning, it was early in the morning, and and when he told the Peter and the rest of the disciples and all those that were going with him to have faith. He wasn't just saying have faith in in, in what he did to the tree. He was telling them to have faith about what they were going to see and experience during the whole day. You see, a lot of times we wake up early. Many of us wake up early in the morning and we are praying as God but we won't believe that God will give us what we ask for. So we'll go through the day with doubt. We'll go through the day with worry. We'll go through the day with this mountain of stuff all around us, but yet we tend to forget that we prayed and asked God early in the day to be with us. When we, as we start our day, we tend to forget that we need the faith to believe to go with us. You see, Jesus was very simple in what he said. He, he even gave an illustration about a mountain. He said, um, you know, you, you, mountain, if, if we have faith, we could tell that mountain to be removed and it should be cast into the sea. You know, one of my favorite gospel singers, 
growing up as a child was Mahalia Jackson. And my mother and my grandmother used to play Mahalia all the time. And, and I knew something was going to happen in my household when I came home from school that Mahalia Jackson was playing in the back, in, in, the, in the house. Now, I didn't know if it was something I did or if it was something that someone else did or if it was just that my mother and grandmother wanted to praise God. But Mahalia Jackson had a song that said, Lord, don't move my mountain. You know, just give me the strength to climb. But I'm here to tell you, church, God didn't say to, to, to the disciples and to Peter on that day, I'm going to have you, I'm going to give you strength to climb the mountain. He said that if you have faith, you can tell that mountain to be removed and that mountain will be moved. You see, church, one of the things that we struggle with in the church is that we say we have faith. We say we believe in the power of prayer, but do we really believe? You see, here on this Tuesday evening, this Tuesday morning, the Passion Week, Jesus was on his way to the temple and he was telling the disciples and he was telling the crowd that was walking with him that you must have faith. You must believe in God. You must don't doubt that God can deliver you from whatever it is you're going through. But a lot of times we get hung up on our doubt. Our doubt tells us that we can't do this. Our doubt tells us that you are not good enough to accomplish this. Our doubt tells us that you are not smart enough to do this. We doubt so much that we even doubt the prayers that we pray. Oh, yes, there are some people who pray great prayers in church. There are some people who pray great prayers over others. There are some people who will want to come and pray for you, but they don't believe in the prayers that they're praying over you. So therefore, I would tell you, don't let that person pray for you. If you, if you feel in your spirit that that person who is praying for you does not believe that they're asking you for healing, asking God to heal you, don't let that person pray for you. And that's what Jesus was telling his disciples as he was getting ready to start his day. He was like, listen, you don't know what this day has to bring. So when you go pray to God, trust and believe and have faith and don't doubt that God will bring you through. You see, I don't know what your mountain is, but Mahaley, I feel that Mahalia Jackson had it wrong. Now, why that's a great song, I don't think I want to climb my mountain because God didn't say climb my mountain. God said if I have faith that I could tell that mountain be, I'll remove, then that mountain will be removed away from me. So I don't know what your mountain is on tonight. Your mountain could be COVID-19 outbreak or whether or not to get the vaccine. You need to find out how that mountain is impacting your life. Your Mountain could be concerns around Black Lives Matter. I don't know what you, how you feel about Black Lives Matter. That's not my job. But if, if it's hindering you, you need to ask God to remove that hindrance from you. I don't know. Your mount could be a loved one is in the hospital and you can't go see them right now because of all the COVID restrictions at the hospitals have going on. I don't know what that is, but if you pray for that person and you believe that your prayer is going to be answered, God is faithful and just to go he to listen and, and, and bless you in your prayers. I don't know if your mountain is a mountain of loneliness or depression, but whatever it is, God has a plan for you. If you take that mountain to God and you ask God to remove these obstacles from your life, I am sure that he was is just to do it. But, you know, you got to believe and you got to have faith. You see, Hebrews 11 and 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see, a lot of times we want to see and we want to have a miracle. We want to know, God, are you there? Show me a sign. God does not have to show you a sign. The sign that God will show you is if you are sick and you pray and ask for healing and you start to get healed and you start to feel better. That is your sign that God is working in your life. You don't need God to curse you or to bless you in order to see God's movement in your life. God was telling his disciples that, listen, Jesus was telling his disciples that as I am walking, as we are getting ready to go into Jerusalem, as I'm getting ready to go into the temple, as I'm getting ready to confront 
all these things I have in front of me. I have to confront these things with faith. I'm asking you this evening, church, when you are faced with obstacles, do you confront them with faith or do you confront them with your own will? Do you ask God to bless you and, and, and prepare you for taking a test, students? Um, when you are going for that job interview, do you ask God to find favor upon, upon you? Do you ask God to do things for you when you are getting ready to go through something? If not, then you need to change your attitude. You see, Jesus was preparing them. He was like, listen, I'm going to do things today and I'm going to say things today that you may not be ready to hear. You may not even understand what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a lot of more questions than you are going to have answers. But here you still need to get up early in the morning and you need to have faith. You need to pray to the Father and ask him, Lord, God, here am I. Be with me as I go through my day. You know, Jesus did not give the reply to Peter of having faith as a way of rebuking Peter. He was giving that as a way of empowering Peter. You see, faith and belief in God empowers you. You ask, how does God empower you through faith? You see, if you have faith to believe that you can do anything, that's empowerment. You know, I'm a I'm a sports person, and and uh, Portland Trailblazers right now have a player named Damian Lillard, and and when the game is on the line, they call it Dame time in Portland because they know that if they get the ball to Damian Lillard, and they need a three to tie or two to win, they know that. They trust that Damian Lillard is going to hit that shot. They don't doubt that he's not going to hit it. And when he missed the shot, it is more shocking than when he makes the shot. Because they call it Dame time. Damian Lillard and his team has faith in him that he's going to come through in the clutch. And I'm telling you right now, church, that you got to have faith. In God, that in the clutch situations of your life, God is standing right there with you. When you are getting ready to go to have an operation, God is right there with you. When the doctor comes back and says, you know what, I've done all I can. I can't do no more. All you got to do is turn to God and say, God, I have faith and trust in you that you are going to heal and deliver me from this obstacle. When your child is coming home from school with failing grades and you've got them all the tutors and you did all the things that you could, but yet. You turned it. You didn't turn it over to God. Try turning that situation over to God and see if his grades don't improve. I tell you, if you are looking and searching for a new job, stop trying to go in there and tell people what your resume is. You go in there and ask your God to show them what your resume is. You see, you need to let your life so shine before men that they will see what you can do. And that's having faith and belief in God. You see, you can walk with a Christian swagger. You can walk with a Christian attitude. You can have that positive attitude if you know you got faith and you believe in God. See, if you believe that God can do above and beyond anything that you can think for, hope for, or ask, then you know that you can make it through any obstacle that you have. And so on this Tuesday morning, as they are getting ready to go down into Jerusalem, Jesus is preparing his disciples and those that are following with him to have faith to believe that God is going to be with them in all the things that they're going to do. See, Jesus already knew some of the things he was going to encounter, but the disciples and the multitudes didn't. So he had to tell them that, listen, on this day, you are going to need to have faith and you're going to need to believe in what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do, because I'm going to say and do things on today that you may not have ever heard or thought you'd hear me say. I'm going to not I'm not going to back down from the Sadducees. I'm not going to back down from the Sanhedrin. I am going to confront them head on. I am going to challenge them just like they're challenging me. I am going to challenge them with questions. And I want them to answer me. And if they can't answer me, then I'm not going to answer them. You see, that was the power that Jesus had. But he also had to transfer that power to his disciples. He had to transfer that power to the people who were walking with him. He had to transfer some of that power to those that were around that was listening because he wanted them to hear what a new and a transformed God he served was going to do. He needed them to know that you need to stop listening to what the Religious leaders are saying because they are leading you down the wrong path. He needed to let them know that this is a new day and a new time. And, and I need you to follow what I'm trying to say. I need you to believe in what I'm trying to say. And I need you to be ready 
and, and, and at all times to go forth, but you got to have faith and you got to believe in me. You see, church, we are here on this Tuesday night of Passion Week, and we need to know that this is the day that you need to really have faith in God. You see, Tuesday to me is the faith day. It is the believing day because it was the day that Jesus was going to transform the church. He was going to transform the minds of the religious people. He was going to let the religious leaders know that, no, I am not a coward. I am not afraid of you. I am not scared of you because I have faith that my God, my father, hallelujah, can do all things. And he sent me here for a purpose. And that purpose is about to become fulfilled. But I want you to know, church, that Jesus didn't shy away. He didn't say, he didn't go in the corner and cower. He stood boldly before the religious leaders. He stood boldly in the temple when he taught. And he didn't teach what they wanted to hear. He taught what God told them to told him to say. You know, I'm about to close this message and 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 I was listening to Sherry Jones Moffat and she has a song called Faith to Believe and some of the lyrics in her song says faith is forever. Church do you have a forever faith? Do you believe that your faith is forever? Do you believe that you have for uh, uh forever 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 ever faith in God. You see, you got to have that forever faith. Faith can't be temporary. You can't have it today and then not have it tomorrow. You can't have it when you're in church and don't have it when you're out of church. She said, faith is forever. Then the next verse in that song, and she said, faith to believe. You see, you have to believe in the things that you know are true. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You have to believe that he went to Calvary's cross, which is coming down the line at the end of the week on Good Friday. You have to believe that everything Jesus said is going to come true. You have to believe that he can move mountains in your life if all you, but you got to believe it. Then the next thing he says, faith that moves mountains. I just told you that if you have faith and you believe the the word says you can tell that mountain in your life to be removed. A lot of times we can't get rid of the mountain because we don't believe that we can remove the mountain. We like, some of us like the mountains in our lives. Some of us like having obstacles that we have to push against because we think it makes us stronger. But no, those obstacles don't make you stronger. Those obstacles just keep you down. It keeps you like a little uh, a mouse running around on the, or a hamster running around on the wheel. You're running around, you're running around, but you're not getting anywhere. See, God said to move, tell that mountain to be thou removed from your life, not run around it, not climb it, not push against it. Then it has, then the next verse says, faith for my dreams. You see, all of us have dreams growing up. We dreamed of being this and you dreamed of being that. Some of us dreamed of being a doctor. Some of us dreamed of being a basketball player. Some of us dreamed of, of being a movie star. Some of us dreamed of being rich. Some of us dreamed of living in a big mansion. Well, I tell you what, if your dreams are need to be heavenly, you need to look a little higher with your dreams. You need to stop dreaming about earthly things and dream about heavenly things because, see, when you dream dreams about heaven, you can set yourself above all this other mess that's going on in your life. If you dream dreams about what it's like to walk around heaven with Jesus and what it's like to feel no more pain, what it's like to be in the land of no more, no more tears, no more crying, no more dying. Those are the kind of dreams that I think we should have. But as a human and with earthly feelings, I have earthly dreams too. The next verse says, faith that is forever. Once again, forever faith. See, it started out with forever faith and, it, and it's ending up on forever faith. And then it says, the last verse in there says, faith to receive. You see, we can't receive the goodness of God because we don't have faith to believe that we're going to receive the blessings of God. Oh, yeah, we read what the Bible has to say and we marvel at the things that went on during Jesus' time. But do we really believe, do you really believe that you can receive the same things? I tell people sometimes that I'm, I'm not the brightest person in the world. So I'm just stupid enough to believe that everything that the Bible says can happen 
to other people can happen to me. You see, I believe that I have faith to tell my mountains to be thou removed and they will be removed. They may not be removed when I want them to be removed, but as I look back over my life, I have seen that God has led me through dangers, seen and unseen dangers, that when I was consistent and persistent in my prayer and I believe that God has removed obstacles from my life that was there, I, I just, I have been receiving so many blessings from God, I can't, can't receive them all. I can't store them all. I can't hold them all because I believe and I have faith that God is going to do. So therefore, you need to be in the position to receive the blessings that you're asking God for. See, some of us ask God, Lord, let me win the lottery. But you don't you're not in the position to receive the blessings of the money. Some people ask God, Lord, I want this and I want that. I want this new car, but you can't receive a new car if you ain't got no driver's license. You can't receive a new car if you don't know how to drive. You can't receive the things you ask for God until you are in the position to receive the blessings. And see, here going through this Tuesday of Passion Week, Jesus had to tell his disciples early on that first you need to have faith to believe. And once you got the faith to believe, then you can receive the blessing. See, as they went through the day and as Jesus went through and he had these different confrontations on this Tuesday, the disciples and those around him received what he had to say with goodness. But the religious leaders didn't receive it the same way. In fact, their anger against him grew even more because not only did he make them understand that, yes, he had the authority, that he preached with the authority, he talked with the authority, he walked with the authority, but he had faith and he believed everything he said. He put them in their place, but he didn't shame them to do it. You see, there's a way to go about telling people how to do things and how not to do things. And on this day, Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to tell you all about yourself. You want to question me? Well, let me turn this back on you. Let me question you. You know, by who authority do you say that you are? You know, do you baptize in the name of, did John baptize in the name of men or did he baptize in the name of God? And see, the religious leaders were smart enough to realize that they could not answer that question because the answer to that question would make them look bad. He also, they, they also knew that when they tried to trick him up by asking him the question about the woman who had uh, seven husbands who would be her husband in heaven. And Jesus said, don't worry about that because you won't be married in, in heaven like that. You're not going to have to worry about stuff like that. All you're going to have to worry about is praising God. But you can't praise God because you don't believe that you're going to get there. See, when you get to heaven, you got to have faith that you're going to get there. You have to believe that when your life comes to an end, that at the end of that life is eternal life. And if you don't believe that you have eternal life, then you need to start putting that in your spirit. You need to start telling people that, yes, I have eternal life because I believe in the only son. I believe in, in Jesus Christ. So as I get ready to end this message on, on this Tuesday night of Passion Week, I just want you to know that you got to have faith to believe. You have to have faith and trust that God is for your forever God. He's not a right now God. He's not a part time God. He's a forever God. He's always on time. He shows up when you need him and he shows up when you don't need him because that's how God is. And that's how our faith should be. Our faith should be with us all the time. It should be with us when we rise in the morning. It should be with us as we walk in through the day. It should be with us when we're in school. It should be with us when we're at work. It should be with us at play. It should be with us when we're sitting down to eat. It should be with us when we're watching TV. Faith should be with us all the time because you need to have a forever faith. And God and Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, you need to have faith. And you must believe church on Tuesday night on this Tuesday of Passion Week. I want you to have faith and I want you to believe that our God is going to do above and beyond anything we could think of or comprehend. May we bow our heads for prayer. Father God, Lord, we'd like to thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord God, we'd like to thank you, Lord, for this Tuesday night message. Lord God, touch us, Lord, that we will have faith, Lord, to believe that we can do anything. We can tell our mountains to be moved, Lord, but we just got to have faith in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.